Good morning, glad you're back. And if this is your first time, glad to have you. So in my last brief episode, I kind of went over my manifesto for you all, where I'm going, what I'm doing and why. And if you haven't seen that episode, I definitely recommend going and checking it out. I'm quite proud of it. But basically overall, I'm going to Alaska in just a couple of days. I put a thousand dollars down on a piece of land. I'm gonna go up and live on my own terms and be my own person. But unfortunately, I didn't really go over any of the how, which is kind of the most important part in any plan that involves driving 4,000 miles across the entire continent to go settle in a place that you have not seen or been to in quite a while, or for most people have never been to at all. And that's kind of the most important part if you are thinking about doing something like that yourself, which maybe you'll want to do at the end of this. Maybe you'll think, you know what? I would really just love to go off into the middle of the wilderness and do my best not to starve. I would really like a framework to go off of for something like this, but nobody really does what I'm doing, or at least no one my age, no one who has my budget. So this is my top however many this ends up being number of tips as to how to move across the continent, what to bring with you on a very, 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 very small budget. Let's dive right into it. Step one, set a start date. So we all know how it goes. You wanna do something or at very least you know that it's gonna be good for you to do that thing, but you just keep putting it off. You're a little tired today. I think I just wanna take a nap. I wanna, you know, take it easy. We'll start tomorrow morning though. And then tomorrow morning comes around and you get up at 10.30 and you're like, uh, that's most of the day. So maybe I'll start tomorrow then. And then you just keep going on and on and on. And then tomorrow never actually comes. And then a week goes by and then it's been a month and you still haven't done the thing. We're not gonna have any of that. You need to set a date. That's one of the first things that you have to do. You have to give yourself a concrete time period then say, this is the day that I'm doing that thing. As far as this goes, that means the day that you're going to leave. My day is May 28th. And I have begun filming this video very, very late, and I have about two weeks left to get everything done. So if you want to be a little easier on yourself, I would recommend probably putting that date a little further out in the future. But I have to get a cabin built before winter, so that is absolutely not going to happen for me. Setting a date is really going to help you actually get to work. If you have that time frame where you know this is exactly how many days I have to get all of this stuff done, it's going to be a lot easier to do that thing. And getting started is by far the hardest part. So you're going to need all the help you can get. So you have that done. Now what? Step two, get rid of everything you have. And I do mean everything, as much as you can afford to get rid of. This is gonna be harder or easier for you depending on how much stuff you have. I have approximately one room worth of stuff and my car can comfortably hold about two thirds of that. So I need to get rid of that other 33% as quick and as soon as possible in any way, shape or form. If it's useful, but not particularly valuable, you can donate that. If it's useful and valuable, you can sell that. If it's a little trinket that you can't afford to get rid of because it has sentimental value, I definitely get that. You can bring those with you. Just try to keep as little as possible because once you get to wherever you're gonna end up going, you need to store that stuff because you're definitely gonna need your car or truck or whatever you have for hauling lumber probably and tools and equipment and things. So you kind of need somewhere to put that stuff to get it out of the way. And you're probably gonna just be putting it under a tarp for a while. Get as little as possible. Go on eBay, go on Facebook Marketplace. I personally hate Facebook Marketplace. I deleted Facebook Marketplace because I despise it. And I despise everyone on Facebook Marketplace because it just makes me so damn angry. I can't even get anywhere because nobody wants to actually buy any. Yeah, but anyway, do a yard sale, do whatever, do whatever. Just get rid of it. You need to get rid of it and maybe you'll get some money on the side too. And that definitely helps. And that's just gonna make everything easier for you. So do that. Step three, car overhauls. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I absolutely despise car maintenance with a passion. I don't even know why, I just don't like it. Don't neglect this. Please don't neglect this because if you're going on as big of a trip as, or at least something comparable to mine, I'm going about 4,000 miles, you kinda need to make sure that your car is going to last that distance and you're not gonna break down somewhere have some big engine problem. So I'm basically going to sub it up as one or two spare tires, uh, clean out the inside because you're just a slob. Let, let's face it, this is disgusting. And probably take care of the utter Christmas tree worth of lights on your dash. Because you know, you know that you have those lights on your dash. You've just been ignoring it forever. I have them. We both have them. You just look at it every time it comes up and you just hit the dash and hope that it goes away. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But when you're in Canada, you don't want that to 
manifest in some horrible way. So make sure that you get that taken care of before you leave. Step number four, tools. In the proverbial land of milk and honey that you're going to, your whole life is gonna be made out of tools. Everything is gonna be need to be built, probably by hand, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. I'm sure you're doing it the way I'm doing it because if you weren't, you wouldn't be watching this because I mean, it wouldn't be homesteading. Kind of a homesteading channel if you haven't figured that out by now. Hi, welcome, this is a homesteading channel. So you're gonna need some tools before you go. If you can scrounge from anywhere, go to maybe some pawn shops if you don't have any, figure something out. Go get a bunch of cheap tools, smaller stuff like screwdrivers, hand saws, like a buzz saw, circular saw, something like that, little things. You can bring those with you and you should bring them with you. But some of the bigger stuff, shovels, wheelbarrows, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't wanna go anywhere long distance with a wheelbarrow. Probably should wait until your destination. So if you're gonna get stuff like that, and I'm sure you will, wait until you get there. But bring what you can while you can. Step number five. This one is kind of a short one. Overalls, you're gonna want them. It's gonna make you feel rugged, some good working clothes, Carhartt overalls, pair of leather gloves for like pulling brush and doing wood, because you're definitely gonna be doing wood. I'm gonna have a stove, gonna be wood burning, things like that. That's what you're gonna want. And that's kind of all there is. I absolutely lied. I did not get Carhartt overalls, but just any working clothes, get some working pants. That's what, that's what this step is. Get working clothes. Thank you, goodbye. Step six, this is one of the most imperative steps in this whole list. This is not one that you wanna miss, and I'm being very, very serious. Make a playlist, a big one. If you're taking a road trip that's comparable to what I'm taking, you're gonna be in your car for five to eight days. That's a really, really long time. If you don't wanna be listening to the radio that whole time, and just listening to whatever happens to come on, you're gonna want some good music. Make a mega playlist, like eight, nine hours long. Something to listen, all of your songs, every song you've ever liked, that you have ever listened to, put it all in one big playlist, make sure that it is ready to go. You're going to want something very stimulating to listen to, something to keep you awake, because you're gonna be doing some long nights as well. So I would also recommend finding a bunch of podcasts, getting some audiobooks. If you like audiobooks, which you should like audiobooks because audiobooks are great. Find something that you really like. Take the time. It's much better to be safe rather than sorry. You do not want to get to the middle of Canada or some other comparable place. Maybe you're going the other direction. Don't want to get to the middle of Colombia and figure out that you have nothing to listen to anymore because I don't know. I didn't really have more to add at that point. Big step. The last month or so that I spent getting ready kind of came and went, and the last night came around before I knew it. I cleared out my desk and wrote my entry for day one. I've tried journaling before, and near the end of middle school I kept it up for nearly two years, but eventually that attempt ended as well. But this time I feel like the stakes are higher. If you think back on your life, you realize some 99% of it just slips through the cracks. No one remembers most of the days last week, much less last month or year. But at this point in my life, right on the doorstep of going out into the wild blue yonder and doing things on my own, that of all things needs to be documented. I need to remember whatever is about to happen and wherever I'm about to go. So this will be journal one. I won't stop writing. Not this time. I didn't sleep much. Couldn't, of course. I mean, really, who could? I was excited, but there was still this sadness. Well, sadness isn't the right word. Melancholy, really, over leaving. So I got up early had a good breakfast, and went out for one more walk in the woods. I wasn't out there long. I've had more than enough time to say goodbye to everything here, and I don't need any more. I'm ready to get on the road, to step out and actually begin. And of course I enjoyed my childhood and all that this place is and represents for me, but I have no qualms about leaving. There are better places to be, more things to do, and I really truly believe that it's time at last to roll up my sleeves and get to work. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, toil for your food.